Welcome, beautiful goddesses, to Teach Travel Talk. I am Megan, and my mission, goal, and vision is to help guide you through the crazy journey of life and of being a human and having this human experience. Because until we realize that we are the creators of our reality, we can either make life very difficult for ourselves or we can make our world incredible but it's all about how we perceive our world and the world around us so this is for you yes you the one listening so that I can uplift and empower you to look within yourself and find that inner light love guidance and intuition that will lead you to unbecome who the world told you to be and bring you back to who you were meant to be and who you were supposed to become in this life. So let's dive deep into conversations that will bring you teachable moments to implement throughout your daily life and to help reprogram the way we think anymore. Right. Yeah, the moon is like, I see you. Right. <laughs> you try. It'll it, it's still gonna affect you no matter if you're in the house or not, man. Exactly. <laughs> you can't hide. Good luck. <laughs> um, sometimes I will put um like veil on. So sometimes I just put like bandanas or like a headband, like you're wearing, just like a little headband, just to kind of like cover my my um crown chakra because sometimes I will get way too emotional and I will feel like a lunatic and I won't be able to ground myself so I like to ground myself a lot when I'm dealing with like um full moons especially because it's a powerful energy especially when you understand what's going on because you'll feel it no matter what even if you understand it or not yeah no totally agree with that you want me to hop into some uh human design stuff yeah if you'd like we okay. can talk about it for a little bit. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Where I you're love at. learning this. <laughs> I love teaching it. <laughs> so, um, and like I said, I'm going all over the place, but it's just like an information dump. Um, I have a channel in human design, which I don't know the exact number. Um, in and it says that I soak up so much energy but it's really hard for me to articulate it out unless somebody asks me. And then it's just kind of like, <laughs> like information overload. Fair enough. Um, and I do on uh, my podcast, Growing Your Magic, have a two-part episode uh, that talks about human design from an actual human design reader, the HDBs. And if you're interested in human design, look up the HDB. She's fantastic. HDBE. Yes. I can also, I will link those podcasts in the show notes down below so people can go and watch this perfect yeah she goes way more in in depth this is just kind of like literally surface level stuff but (laughs) but it's um, hard because most stuff we have to do surface level we only have so much time but I think it gets people it's put the plants the seed right that's what we're doing with these podcasts we're planting seeds we're trying to help you and if this resonates with you go and do more research go and find more podcasts that are talking about this you know, so it's not that we're giving you everything all at no. once. We're just we're sparking yeah. your interest. <laughs> yeah, this took six years to get just the information that I have. And I still have so much more to learn. Um, and I find the p- certain people that I like the way that they talk about astrology. If you're listening to somebody that's talking about astrology in any negative way at all, like because there you get like retrogrades that happened last year almost every single planet was in retrograde at one point or another and that almost never happens it was a complete restructure all right well welcome everyone today i have princess leia with us today (laughs) hello (laughs) i'm super excited to have you here we just finished her podcast Mm -hmm. so you can definitely go and check that out but now we get the privilege to hear princess leia and her story and i did ask her to talk about her incredible experience with human design and what's the other ones like the rising sign what do we call that um so just astrology would be all of that your your natal chart 
fair enough fair enough so I would definitely I'm so inspired by it I have been hearing a lot of messages especially in podcasts it's been coming up a lot and I would love to deep dive into it and learn a little bit more about it from you okay is there any where you want me to start I don't know where should I start (laughs) (laughs) um starting point for us (laughs) well I'll just I'll start with kind of like my experience because I'm not an astrologer reader or anything Mm -hmm. um I might end up being that way I just like to guide um so I growing up was not allowed to be into any of this kind of stuff I think I was like maybe 15 I found out what my sun sign was and horoscopes were all evil and bad so I was like oh whatever um but I don't even remember entirely what the point was that got me into it but I was listening to a crap ton of podcasts um when I was cleaning houses full-time so I was just had a lot of time just to listen and absorb and I kind of started with like um uh, psychology and stuff like that. I was really interested in um, character and development and just people and personalities. And then I think something went into like a podcast about um, the different signs and different stuff. And then they were saying like, oh, that's all sun signs only the tip of your I- the iceberg. You have your sun sign, your rising sign. Every single planet was in a certain sign when you were born. And every single planet rules a different aspect of your life like what (laughs) that sounds cool bomb exploding (laughs) so it was it was a few years of that just like learning astrology and it's been about I think six years five or six years that I've been really learning it um and there's still just so much (laughs) I will say that makes you an expert so I feel that you know something that we dive deep into I don't think you need a certificate or a degree to say that Hey, I know this. Cool. It gives you backing. But if you're so intensely, you are an expert. So yeah. thank you, Princess Leia, for bringing your expertise to us. Thank you for asking. Of course. Um, I, yeah, it's just, it's, it has transformed my life because basically um, it gives you the permission to be who you are. It does not change who you are. It does not make any difference at all some people like there is a little bit of placebo I feel as well that you can be um a little bit more like oh okay yeah Taurus like yeah I'm 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 stubborn I'm grounded I'm all these different things but then it's like you dive into that's only the tip of the iceberg of your sun sign and then what is it like does it have the energy is it sitting like right next to your um your moon sign so then you have different aspects right there with like planets being right next to each other or is your mercury mercury sign sitting right on the opposite side of your sun sign so like even if you have the same sun sign as somebody else and you're like oh i'm nothing like this other cancer that's because their whole entire chart is completely different <laughs> and the way that they were brought up the way that they're raised the circumstances that they were in so it's like those those aspects it's how you relate to and the filters that it goes through um and it can be completely overwhelming at first um and so that's why it's just like I I like to tell people to break it up like look into um figure out your chart or if you know your time birth time it's really important if you don't know your birth time it's hard to know your your uh, your rising sign because the rising sign is where the sun was on the horizon when you were born, mm-hmm. um, and then that kind of sets up your whole chart. It doesn't change where the like other planets are, um, but the the rising sign it tells you where your first house is. So when you see the chart, it's like a pie chart. It's cut up into twelve different pieces, twelve different houses. And that is where we can find like the different houses are different areas of your life. Mm -hmm. Think of your natal chart. Like I like to think of it like a stage play. So you have, and let's see if I can get it right. Um, You have your, your houses and that's like the different acts of a play 
or the different like the different rooms like you have like the courtyard here or you have like their you're in their house or different rooms of different houses like the houses they are different areas of your life your first house is the house of self it's you it's your identity it is bare just everything else out the window it is you the second house is like finances and then it just goes further and further out um i want to make sure that i have um like i don't have everything memorized so i want to have a reference point in front of me as well as i go on so i don't say anything um no please misleading yeah um i have so many boards on pinterest pinterest (laughs) is my main place that's like pinterest is my book of shadows (laughs) okay that works Um, and I'll have I, somewhere <laughs> exactly so I have like um multiple different different boards and stuff for this so let me bring I totally agree with that my kids they ask me all these questions I say I am not google google it <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay so here's a good reference point okay so um so yeah it starts in the first house where it's like self and your appearance even too so your rising sign is all about like this the self your essence and it can affect your um your not your personality but like your the look that you have to you a little bit um so like leo risings i'm a leo rising leo risings typically have something to do with their mane their hair Uh and i have the biggest thickest curliest hair like i have afro and but i also feel like i need to change it all the time that's my expression and leos are very out there they like to express themselves they're very fiery and that's where a lot of that has come into play for me because I don't feel never felt like a Leo but the more I I find out about myself the older I get I feel like I'm I'm pushing towards that a little bit more so the first house is all about that and the second house is money third house is like early education education um siblings and family so it's like going further outside of yourself Mm -hmm. think of it as a spiral where the first house starts at the base level of yourself and you're slowly spiraling up and away from yourself okay so then you go like fourth house is um like home and private life and your parents fifth house is like children creativity but then you're getting into like romance and creativity all all play and art and then the sixth house is like um of health and work co-workers so you're getting further outside yourself Mm -hmm. and then when you hit into the seventh so that's like the bottom half of the the pie then you're getting into relationships and marriage partnerships eighth house is um money but it's like others people others money like joint shared finances debt um different things like that um but it can also like go with like death and different things death and rebirth um the ninth house is higher education philosophy religion you're getting further outside yourself but as you're spiraling you're starting to come back in so you're thinking about things of like career in the 10th house and all the 11th house of like partnership and friendship but it also deals with like technology and hopes and dreams and then you get back to your 12th house and that is all about like the the spirituality that that's like your it's like you got your conscious and your subconscious. So you got that uh-huh. spiral where you're getting further away from yourself, but you always come back to back yourself, to but you're higher. It's like almost like your higher self. Mm-hmm. And then you start the circle again. So one of the coolest things to work with is knowing where the sun is in the sky. Your chart stays solid. It doesn't move. Mm-hmm. You- chart will always be your your sun and will always be in cancer your moon will always be in aries but Mm -hmm. the sun changes every month goes Mm -hmm. into a different sign and it goes into a different house of your own chart so if you can think of your chart okay so your chart is solid and think of it like where you're at And then think of what's happening in the sky, constantly moving. But think about like magnetic poles to yourself on the, on the ground level to the sky of like your, your sun. And then that the sun in the sky 
Mm-hmm. It's like, well, we're moving, but there's like a magnetic pull that will always constantly be changing. Mm-hmm. So it's like this dance that plays. So if you just think of like these strings that are attached to your chart and then the chart up there, it's always moving and playing this dance because each planet moves at a different speed. Mm-hmm. Saturn takes 28 years to get back to the same sign when you were born. Well, I'm at 28 years, so. (laughs) So you are in your Saturn return. (laughs) Have you heard anything about that before? Uh Uh-uh. Okay, so um, Saturn, Mm -hmm. um, and again, I'm just bringing up reference points because my my head likes to go everywhere and it gets super excited. (laughs) Like I have it that I have the knowledge, but it's like this is why I'm not like an astrologer yet, <laughs> because I just get uh I just get so excited. But that's also part of my human design. I actually have a gate that that is all about that. So let me bring up and yeah, I just I just encourage anybody if they're interested in any of this or feel overwhelmed when they see their chart, Pinterest and Google are, are my best friends. I just type in like, huh, what is uh Libra? or moon in Libra, and then hit enter. And then you'll find a bunch of things and then it starts to ground yourself. You're like, oh, okay. Or like, what does Venus mean? Um, And I'm like, oh, okay, that's like love. Okay, well, my Venus is in Aries. Okay, well, what does that mean? And then it just starts to play it. If you know what it means, I apologize for jumping all over. (laughs) (laughs) It's okay. (laughs) But going back to like the rooms and the play, If the houses are one thing, that's the area of life. And then the um, planets are the actors. And then the sign is the costume they wear. Ooh, okay. Okay. So the, the planets rule aspects of your life, like your communication, your love. But you might have like your love in your um second house so you it might be more of like the love of like figuring out finances and stuff like that um or your passion for that kind of stuff and then it could be an Aries so then like how you're going to go about your love of finances in a fiery way oh okay so okay. it's like it it's all filters through it. It's like when you're editing a photo and you put different filters on things. Mm-hmm. This is like it's the same picture, but it's different colors and different aspect to it. Yeah. So it's it's like again, like all that that dance that you play. Um, so that's how I've like to that really clicked for me <laughs> when I understood. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, it's like there's different areas of life and then there's different there's different transits and stuff too so they they can be um plans can be opposite themselves which can create a little bit of tension or they can be trying which is really a, a good flow and there's all these things that like I can't even comprehend yet <laughs> um but I like to know like certain things like your sun moon rising your Saturn return is pretty important as well because it Saturn is the planet of like hard lessons um but also there's all it, it sounds scary <laughs> but Saturn is it's like authority responsibility limitations restriction time it does it in a very loving way but it's kind of like I don't like to say like a dad but it's just like it's, that's your structure Saturn is a lot of just structure for you mm-hmm. um and Uh, when it goes back into the sign that it was when you were born Mm -hmm. that's your Saturn return and that means that it's like you're kind of going you're going to be going through some some stuff to really like set you on your path things that you haven't dealt with you're going to be tested with that I guess is a a good way to explain no that literally (laughs) is how my life has been right now my 28 years like it's going back to my traumas and back to this stuff and really finding that root cause and all of that and really like breaking free letting it go Mm -hmm. stop these limiting beliefs and everything and putting myself on this path of like where do I want to go where do I see myself let's vision it let's manifest it let's attract it and stop letting the past get in the way of all of this 
Oh yeah. Well, and then it, 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 it really just like slingshots you on there, but it stays in that sign for about three years. So it Ooh. can be, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to so be stuck in this for three years. <laughs> um, you might have, you might've already been in it for a little bit. It's Ooh, okay. For me, it's hard to, to decide. I, I've heard so many different things. Like some people say like, oh, well, no, it, it's going to be a three year span of, and this is when it starts and this is where it ends. But it's like Saturn, because your Saturn is an Aquarius. Mine is too, but mine is like at the very end of Aquarius because I'm one year younger than you. So okay. it's like at the very end of Aquarius, almost in Pisces. Mm-hmm. And yours is like kind of like right in the middle of Aquarius. But it just went into Aquarius um, the end of last year. Okay. Um, so it was, but I, that's where I felt that it started. I felt that it started like as soon as it hit into Aquarius, I felt my Saturn return kind of starting. But it's like I said, it's different for every it can yeah. be more intense and it can have a different peak for you as well. So where that energy is very intense, so it kind of like builds up and it hits its peak and then it builds down so that that magnetic pull isn't as strong. Um, and then it deals with like what, whatever your Saturn, what the house that Saturn is in as well will be like the area of life that you're going to have to work with the most, if that makes sense. A little bit. So like, is that like throughout the year that what sign it's in or? So your specific Saturn Mm -hmm. will be staying in Aquarius in the third house your whole life. Okay. But the planet, so that's why I was like your chart uh, always stays the same but the chart yeah. above it's dancing, always yeah. dancing it's always moving so saturn is going through aquarius so like you've got your aquarius and the or your saturn in aquarius and then saturn's coming around and it went through a capricorn and now it's in aquarius and now it's like in, now you're in your Saturn return and it goes into Pisces and that's pretty much where it'll stop. Okay. But you'll be learning all these lessons for this for about three years. And like I said, there'll be different peaks and different, and it depends on how much you've been, how much work you've done up to that point. A lot of people don't really face a lot of their stuff until they get to their Saturn return and then it can be horrible and you have two Saturn returns. So when you're about 60, it's going to be back there again. And so it's just like different things that can be brought up. But if you're on your path and you've been already doing the inner work, it doesn't have to be a hard lessons that you learn. It's just going to be doing them and getting it done. And, and because of what Saturn in Aquarius is, it is this faster energy, but it's also like doing things differently. Aquarius is all about doing things different and everything that we're going into the have you heard of the age of Aquarius before I've heard of it but I don't know okay it's there there's other podcasts that explain it way better (laughs) but it's basically um like in the 60s is when it's kind of started there's like the song the dawning of the age of Aquarius and that's when things were just getting a little bit weirder in the flower child that's when things kind of started we're getting out of the Piscean age um and it takes like 2,000 years for the ages to change so like around Jesus time was like the Piscean age um which was all about like religion that was the rise of like religion and Christianity and we had like religious wars and different stuff like that and Mm -hmm. a lot of things um but now we are at this incredibly special time like that is why there are so many spiritual podcasts and so many like of this new age stuff. That's why it's okay to talk about this kind of stuff. Now it used to be so woo woo and you'd be like burned at the stake. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, it's, it's okay to talk about that now because it, age of Aquarius is all about different thinking. And that is what we need. And with a Saturn going into Aquarius and um, there was a couple of other um planets that have been really stationed in Aquarius but some of them are a lot more fast moving but Pluto is going to be in um 
Aquarius here soon. I'm not entirely sure the exact date. Um, I think it's the end of this year and the next couple of years. And that's when it's really, really going to hit. A lot of things are going to change. The internet came around to where we had communication and more free thinking and access at our fingertips. A lot more things like that happen a lot faster now. It's fast tracking things. We're in a completely, completely different age. The way that we were before is not how it's going to work now, especially with what happened last year. Agreed. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Yes. We, and we have to change. We, mm-hmm. we can't keep doing the same thing and not learning from the past because we're just repeating the same cycle over and over again. Like, come on humans, let's evolve already. Like exactly. and we think we're so is. smart. We're not. <laughs> no but we the thing is like we all we all know it we all it's 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 the process of remembering um but there there will be people that are stuck in their ways starting to question and starting to come around that have been that way for years and years most of their life will be like okay maybe there are other ways of thinking or other ways of accepting as well because community is a big thing um with Aquarius as well where it's just like there's a lot more community it's not just about me and myself anymore it's like okay well if I change myself that's changing the common consciousness as well so that there's there's a huge um leaning towards that of just different thinking mm-hmm. we need <laughs> so being able to to know these kinds of things with your natal chart is a great way of being able to one know yourself so that you can work on your healing and working on those things Again, it doesn't change anything, but you can find your biggest wound in life as well. If you look for your Chiron and that's your wounded healer, it's an asteroid and it will tell you, depending on what house it's in and what sign, it'll tell you your biggest wound, but it also helps you know how to heal it. Ooh, okay. You'll have to <laughs> tell me all that too, man. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I will. like the biggest thing I'm dealing with right now is like what is my biggest wound so that I can get it you know get this work done because I feel that I've tried for so long not only heal myself but all this like ancestral curses and all of this stuff you know and it's just like, okay what is it what what is the pinpoint what do I really need to well I'll tell you right now that your Chiron is in your ninth house which the ninth house rules um (laughs) and I love that the first word is travel (laughs) yeah (laughs) so then it goes travel wisdom philosophy higher education law and religion cross-cultural relation or cross-cultural relations learning and ethics so that's where your chiron is in so I find it extremely fascinating that you have traveled like you have. <laughs> so all of that is like healing your Chiron for sure. Um, and I can I can do some research and find like a really good article on that because it it'll there's a lot of really beautiful articles on like YouTube um, that go into like this is what Chiron in the nice house looks mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. and this is how it's good to heal it. Um, and your Chiron is in um, Leo as well. So there's a lot of like okay. fire energy that rules that for sure. Oh, duh. Why do you <laughs> think I've been traveling so much? <laughs> I, I don't, I don't wonder that anymore. No, I've seen that. And that is the, um, so you have your Chiron in, in the house of travel and you also have Mercury, which is um, like communication and stuff too. That is also in the house of travel so that you have a podcast about travel <laughs> and, uh, well, and it, which is funny because it's not like the travel that pe- I mean yes I do talk about travel but it's so like my thing that I I have come up with you know is teaching other people how to travel through this human experience you know by talking about our stories so I think that's really funny because I came up with this name and that idea didn't come until very recently but it was like funny how it evolved. And I was like, yeah, because I mean, I do love traveling, but we aren't just traveling. We're literally like yeah, 
traveling always <laughs> oh yeah oh my gosh yeah well and that's why the ninth house is also not just travel it is philosophy wisdom higher education mm-hmm. so that's a really cool like connection that um you're putting out there to redefine the word travel too yes. it's, it's just like oh i travel because i go to another country it's like yeah you can astral travel as well <laughs> yes yes you can <laughs> <laughs> um so i'll take i'll say a couple more points on astrology and then i can go to human design even though they definitely cross yes. over a lot um another thing that i really really encourage people to look at is their north node and their south node the mm-hmm. north node is what you are here to learn what you are here to work towards and the south node is what you are here to let go of and what you have already pretty much mastered in a past life or it's just kind of like what you're inherently maybe good at and then you're but you might not need to do anymore maybe that part of you is kind of it's just like it's so habitual that it's holding you back so the and the north and south node are going to be completely opposite of each other no matter where they're at it's going to be completely opposite of each other Mm -hmm. so you need to learn and bring into your life what is the opposite of what you're like really comfortable with if that makes sense so yes you you can't change unless you're uncomfortable (laughs) So that is something, but, and, but it can also be something that you want in life as well. It's something that you really need to work on. I have, um, yours is on the exact cusp of, um, Sagittarius and, uh, Capricorn. So I'm trying to see even what house it's in. It looks like it's in Capricorn. My yeah. what? My north? Your, your north node is in Capricorn. It's zero degrees Capricorn. <laughs> <laughs> but and then it's in the um, second house of finances. But I, I'll send you some stuff on that because that's a little bit harder for me to kind of decipher just through my head. But I'll send you some um, cool. That is, little- I will say this. So the fact that you just said that mine is in the north and that's what I need to learn. That literally is what I am learning right now. I'm not <laughs> my book that I'm reading (laughs) you're bad as at making money yep so you know what (laughs) yeah yeah and um Capricorn likes money Capricorn's pretty good with that um so yeah I'll send you some stuff on that as well um it's really fascinating I just like to again for anybody that's listening to look up like find your what your north node is you'll you'll see the north node on your chart you won't see the south node it's like a little tiny like horseshoe with little circles at the end and a little tiny t in the middle it's like really complicated but you'll see off on on the side it'll say your north node and it'll it'll say it on there but um you just like look up like south node and capricorn in the second house and just like look at the little articles and different stuff I have one on my phone I made it like part of my desktop and it says the Sagittarius North Node mission and it gives me 10 points that I read every day to remember this is what I'm here for I resonate it with it more than anything that I've ever heard in my life I'm like that's it that's what I need to do yes okay but it's so easy to forget because it's not what I'm used to it's not what it's what I'm here to learn not what I'm here to teach others yet necessarily Mm -hmm. and I need to remember I'm still young (laughs) right me too (laughs) I'm like I got this whole thing like this whole journey to go I'm not even halfway through it yet man so like (laughs) enjoy enjoy the journey yes yes the fact that I'm like okay we can go through two Saturn returns and we're still relatively young in our 60s yeah (laughs) like okay okay I just need to slow down um and I've had some really cool revelations with that but um so yeah I, I would say those are great places to start because those are things that you can implement implement now and then if you have certain things like certain problems you're like I really want to learn more about my communication look into your mercury sign or it's like I really want to understand what where my love and my passions at or how how I love and show love look into your venus and just like kind of like play with it because it's 
it can really help you. And if there are things that you're not resonating with at all, and you're kind of maybe even fighting it, just sit with it for a little bit because and come back to it because none of it's wrong. <laughs> and then once you start learning about yourself, you can start learning about what's happening in the charts as we go on. And then you can kind of like get a head start on it. Like knowing, like start with the moon phases, the full moon and the new moon, follow those. <laughs> yes. I'm the, I actually started doing that. I have, I found this website that tells me, you know, what it's in like the waxing, waning, all of that. And I've been looking into, okay, what does that mean? How can I use, cause I've always loved the moon. I've always felt the power of the moon. You're a cancer and cancer is ruled by the moon. Yeah. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> So yeah, lately, I, I mean, cause I love doing full moon rituals all the time. So this, I was just like, I need to get more connected to the moon. I need to know the phases and how to work with them, you know, and learning, okay, when is it in transformation? When do I, you know, and it's doing that cycle and every month yeah. just kind of going through it. It's really nice. Yeah. Well, it's, it's such a beautiful thing because we, the moon rules our emotions. It rules the the liquid in us and we if it can control the tides we're like 72 percent water it's controlling us Mm -hmm. there there's a reason like when that whenever there was a full moon people would act out and they would call them lunatics because they were just acting out they were in they were filled with 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 emotion but releasing it and and emotion is not a bad thing either it's like feeling it and flowing through it when you start working with the moon there's way more flow that you can go through and you can understand like okay well what when you're it's a full moon you're fully exposed you're like okay well what do I need to release what can I what can I get rid of what can I because you see it too and this the full moon um, that's approaching now. I don't know when this will be released, but um, we have a. We're pretty much under the full moon influence right now. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's full moon tonight. <laughs> yep, yep. So it's just like playing with that. I can't ever really do anything on the full moon because I'm e- either completely tired. Or I'm, I'm just like so jazzed. I just want to do art and I want to do all these things. I'm like, oh, I I should be doing a ritual. I should be doing this you're going to still have that energy. There's no should you have to do exactly at that specific time the next day or something. I'll be like, okay, I got it all out. Now I'm going to journal. Now I'm going to, to dive deep and feel what I need to feel. I follow a lot of things on Instagram where they say like, this is what this full moon means. Like, okay, cool. Well, what does it mean for me as well? Because when the full moon in Libra hit, I was feeling it so differently than other people were feeling it because my moon is in Libra. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like I was able to take it differently, but it's, it's so beautiful because not everybody with the same moon is going to feel it the same way either. That is very true. So yeah, I'm just really tapping into your intuition with it as well, but understanding like, okay, what are you doing? (laughs) Okay. That's what you're doing to me. All right, cool. Good to know. Cause you can't really hide anymore. Right. Yeah. The moon is like, I see you. Right. (laughs) You try it. It's still going to affect you no matter if you're in the house or not, man. (laughs) Exactly. You can't hide. Good luck. (laughs) Um, Sometimes I will put um, like veil on so sometimes I just put like bandanas or like a headband like you're wearing just like a little headband just to kind of like cover my my um crown chakra because sometimes I will get way too emotional and I will feel like a lunatic and I won't be able to ground myself so I like to ground myself a lot when I'm dealing with like um full moons especially because it's a powerful energy especially when you understand what's going on because you'll feel it no matter what even if you understand it or not yeah, no, totally agree with that. You want me to hop into some per, uh, human design stuff? Yeah, if you'd like. We okay. can talk about it for a little bit. <laughs> okay, I don't know where I you're love at. learning this. <laughs> I love teaching it. <laughs> so, um, and like I said, I'm going all over the place, but it's just like an information dump. Um, I have a channel in human design which I don't know the exact number um in and it says that I soak up so much energy but it's really hard for me to articulate it out unless somebody asks me and then it's just kind of like like information overload um 
and I do on my podcast Grow in Your Magic have a two-part episode um, that talks about human design from an actual human design reader the HDBs and if you're interested in human design look up the HDB she's fantastic HDBE yeah. I can also I will link those podcasts in the show notes down below so people cool. can go and watch those perfect yeah she goes way more in in depth this is just kind of like literally surface level stuff but <laughs> but it's um, hard because most stuff we have to do surface level we only have so much time but I think it gets people it put the plants the seed right yes. that's what we're doing with these podcasts we're planting seeds we're trying to help you and if this resonates with you go and do more research go yes. and find more podcasts that are talking about this you know so it's not that we're giving you everything all at no. once we're just we're sparking yeah. your interest <laughs> yeah, this took six years to get just the information that I have, and I still have so much more to learn. Um, and I find the p- certain people that I like the way that they talk about astrology. If you're listening to somebody that's talking about astrology in any negative way at all, like because there you get like retrogrades that happen. Last year, almost every single planet was in retrograde at one point or another, and that almost never happens. It was a complete restructuring of our lives. When yeah, no, think- no wonder this happened. <laughs> yeah, no. When like Mercury, it'll go rec- retrograde ev- like three times every year, mm-hmm. and that is just—it's not that it's actually moving. It's just like an an optical illusion, but it it affects us in a little different way. So like our communication can get wonky our technology can get wonky because that's what it rules whatever mercury rules in your chart and just the general Mm -hmm. it it will it can like set things back it's but it's good and it's good energy to work with people can see it as negative but it's like no you get to rework redesign like anything that's re you get to redo it (laughs) redo and sometimes it's nice to like kind of take a step back and look at it. But some people, if they're, if they're doing it in a negative way, you don't want to listen to them and no fear. There's no fear in astrology. It is just seeing like, okay, this is, is what, this is what's happening. It is what needs to happen. It is all done with love. That is the way that I see God. There's a, uh, an, a Latin phrase that I heard in eat, pray, love. And I can't, I don't know what it is in, in Latin, but it says that how they described God is the love that moves the sun and other stars. And that's how I see it. I see that God divine, the conscious energy is us, is the planets, is the divine working of all of this everything that's happening even in even 2020 everything that happened happened for a reason and it is divine timing Mm -hmm. so this is a blueprint that we have for ourselves and then no and we have a blueprint for what's happening right now in the sky and how it affects us and it's just tools that's all it is yeah I so agree with that and I've yeah. loved I've loved tapping into these tools I've loved learning about them and tapping into them because I I feel like again when you are just looking at like the newspaper that has like oh just cancer that's only very surface and it's not going into truly who you are and again we all try to put everyone in a box. You're all the same. You all have the same characteristics, but that's not the truth because it goes, like you said, even deeper than that. Mm-hmm. We need to know our sun or moon rising because that all affects everything about us. Yeah. So I'll say one controversial thing, so I won't go too far deep into it, but something that I see is that astrology has been around since the dawn of the ages <laughs> the planets have always been there this is just a human way that we can understand what's going on and there was so much control from higher up uh, ranks if you want to yeah. call it over the years that didn't want this stuff to be known so they said you must follow this one way Mm -hmm. all other ways are evil fear just putting Mm -hmm. fear out there so people won't access what's inside of them Mm -hmm. because 
they want to control yeah. all these other people. And if everybody is understanding their magic and understanding their charts, they're witches, let's burn them. Yes. Yeah. Oh, they're using things to make themselves better, like herbs and stuff. No, you need to go to us. We are the only ones that can help you. Mm-hmm. You're a witch. Let's burn you. <laughs> because we don't want other people to get what's inside of them because they're so powerful. Yeah. So that is why all of this stuff was so taboo for so long. Because it's, it's not evil. It's not satanic. It's not whatever. Yeah. Who have come from or have been told it's like yeah because the higher-ups are scared of our power yeah and knowing ourselves they're scared of us disconnecting from them and not needing them anymore yeah and finding that we only need ourselves we need our a little community and stuff Mm -hmm. and we're we're good yeah and I can say because I actually had a conversation with a friend yesterday who you know, thinks all my woo woo stuff is, uh, (laughs) it's what she calls it. Uh huh. And we're still friends. It's okay. We have different beliefs. She is very religious and that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's totally fine. Um, but it is, it's, you know, um, when I talk about it, like even my crystals or anything, it's always like, Oh, nope. That's, that's saying that's his work. And it's like, well, he's doing a great job. So uh, <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I'm enjoying him. <laughs> right? <laughs> he's helping me discover myself and, uh, right. and <laughs> he's not as evil as you think. <laughs> no. And that's like a whole other subject and stuff too. There, there's, there's this whole thing. Like if you actually read like the satanic uh, or, or like bible like, or the, something well or like they're like their rules or whatever not rules but like commandments whatever you want to okay, say like yeah oh my gosh it's amazing it's like really? yeah i want to do all that stuff <laughs> because yeah. they say the 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 satan from the bible is uh-huh. is a totally different thing from like the the satan and and i'm i haven't done so much research into it so i just encourage people just like to if they're curious yeah. to research it but i've seen a couple things like on tiktok and different videos and stuff of people saying this is like no it's just like a completely different thing they're completely separate it's just like it's like yeah there's dark energy there is absolutely dark energy but it's yeah. like there then you have these people that like worship uh pan who is a centaur and he but they but christians might see that as satan it's like yeah no he's actually the god of nature yeah that right. is, no that is very true <laughs> yeah, yeah there's it's just again different cultures and what they believe so mm-hmm. yeah that's a whole nother subject <laughs> right it's a whole different one <laughs> uh, but i will i will touch on uh some human design so I don't leave people hanging <laughs> just like a little bit we'll, we'll, we're just yeah. gonna throw you a little bit <laughs> but we'll yeah. definitely have you come back on and tell us even more about it <laughs> okay okay cool cool um yeah just to kind of like swing from the astrology because astrology is a great place to, to start too because that's just like a really big thing that everybody seems to know or that more people more people people are starting to see yeah and it's more of like in pop culture mm-hmm. um but human design is a way to it takes astrology the I Ching, the, so- the chakra system and one more the kabbalah system and it just kind of like combines it all it's actually a newer um system it's about like 30 i want to say 35 years but i've been learning about it for a while so it's um a little bit over 35 years and this um one guy Ura. Urahu, I think is, is how you say his name. And he did like a seven day meditation. He got this download and he could see it all. So it's a newer um, way of seeing it, but it's like a new way of like all these ancient things put together. So it's a new way of seeing it together. Um, and then if, when you look up your chart, you can go to mybodygraph.com. And you just type in again, the same information you would type in to put into your astrology chart to astrology chart to figure out your natal chart um and it will give you this like little human looking body with all these different shapes and it kind of looks like chakras and some will be colored in and some will be defined the uh or some will be colored in some will be empty the empty ones are what you're here to share with the world and the defined ones are things that or sorry i've already been talking too long i'm all over the place (laughs) Empty ones are what you're here to absorb, what you're here to learn. 
and then the defined ones are what you're here to give to the world and share with other people and there are five different types but again those types are the tip of the, of the iceberg you have um, generators manifesting generators manifestors reflectors and projectors and um each ones have a little bit of a different rarity manifestors and manifesting generators are like the bigger bigger populations i think they're like in the third um like 30 percent my percentages are, are going to be all off um okay. and so it goes more uh more common but common is not a bad thing they're here to like bring the light and the joy and they they just do what lights them up they're kind of like the light in the room um, and then you have projectors, which are significantly less percentage, um, manifestors, which are like 8% of the population. They're like the ones, the doers, the changers, um, like some, they can be anything from all the way to like these visionaries to dictators, like Adolf Hitler was a manifester. They just have like these big things. They make things happen, but then you have amazing people, um, I think that the guy that um, downloaded um, Human Design, Ara, who mm -hmm. was a manifester as well. Mm -hmm. So they are just here. They, uh, my husband's a manifester and he has big ideas for what he wants to bring to the world. Um, but they need help with the rest of the types to help them do that. Um, and the projectors are here to guide um, they they kind of like see the bigger picture. They're like the birds on a branch and they like see the bigger picture. Um, but they they have their restrictions that are also blessings and then you have the reflectors which is one percent of the population their whole chart is completely white and they are here to be like the um the reflection of the population so in tribes there would always be like one person that was the reflection of the tribe like of the and they would typically be um like reflectors where they you could tell how the tribe was doing by like the health of this one person in a sense like um who is it there's a lot of um celebrities but michael jackson was a reflector and he like really was reflecting what was happening in the time that he was alive and when you like think of it that way you're like oh wow okay <laughs> so pay attention to reflectors in your lives <laughs> Um, but it's all the energy that you put out and um, there's different things that you can learn about your your authority and like how you make decisions to um, your not self theme of how you're really not in alignment and how you how you act like projectors it's bitterness manifestors it's being angry um, and but for a manifester to find peace is their truest self. And it's that's the opposite of the anger, but it's being able to work with that and knowing it. And it has been the number one thing in my life that I think has helped me the most is finding out that I'm a projector um, and just working with that. And it even tells you in your chart, um, I'm finding more things too, that we have similarities in our chart, which is cool. But um, there's little arrows that are next to the head. Mm -hmm. that you'll see in the on the chart and that shows you different things of like your eating environment like if it's sometimes they're like it'll tell you if it's best to eat in direct sunlight or in the shade or around people sometimes to digest you might need to like go eat in your room alone it's easier to eat or you thrive in big groups um, and it tells like your focus it tells you if you're like a specific manifester like if you can literally like think like i want a red car and i want it like around this time and you can like really get like specific like the universe is going to do what it's going to do but then when you're a non-specific you have to just kind of like i kind of want this feeling mm -hmm. in my life and just let things come to you mm -hmm. and so finding those different things out and you can find the channels of like where your energy is flowing and how things are connected because some some of your um, some of your centers will be connected, and that will just literally show. Because you'll see all these lines. Some are white, some are black or red, and it um, the red side is all your subconscious, and it can tell you your subconscious stuff. And then the black side is your conscious, so things that you might be a little bit more aware of. So it can go deep. <laughs> wow. 
Okay. I like yeah. it. I like it. Oh, I can't yeah. wait to like have you on and explain even more about it, but I hear the little one. So I definitely, I will just ask you a few, my last few questions I usually ask people. First of all, is there a book that you are reading at the moment? Um, yes, I am reading a couple ones, but this is the one that I'm reading right now, The Alchemist. <gasps> I, I'm a very, 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 very slow reader. I always have been. My brain just can't really focus. He is my favorite <laughs> author. I I'm love excited. him. I'm excited. I'm very excited. I've been working on that this one for a while, but now I'm like, no, I need to work through this. But I will say after you read that one, you should go and pick up his book, Brida. I think you would okay. really enjoy it. It's about okay. a witch learning how to become one. So oh my gosh. Should... Okay. <laughs> yes. yes. I no. That was the first book I read out of his and it sparked me into him and oh, yes. So Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So I'm I'm loving that. And I, I'm always reading like a self-help book or something. I have the the mindful mother right now as well as like more of my my nonfiction. I have a couple other ones that I, I, I start a lot of books and I hardly ever finish them. So that's one of the thing I'm working on this year. Oh, I love it. And is there like a mantra, a quote that you go by right now in your life? Or a one little thing, saying? <laughs> I feel like I'm drawing a blank, but the first one that comes to my mind is that everything happens for a reason. And that just gives me just so much peace because no matter what's happening, it's like, oh, oh everything happens for a reason. And that one has probably stuck with me the longest Again, I feel like there's a new one that I've been doing, but <laughs> basically just to remember to like, to be present. I have little things around my house, like movement and activation. It's like, it doesn't have to look any certain way. Just move. Don't be perfect. Just, just fly, just fly, just do it. Yeah, I agree. Well, Princess Leia, thank you so so much for joining us. This gave me so much information. I'm going to go do so much research out. Yes. <laughs> um, is there any um, place that people can find you? Yes, I am at Growing Your Magic at, um, on, pod, uh, on my podcast, on Instagram and on TikTok as well. Um, and I'm trying to kind of figure out where what all I'm doing on those platforms. And I am, I just made a Facebook group um, that is just a baby little garden area that I want people to come and bring all their crazy cool like seeds of information and just a community. Um, so that one you can just look up, um, grow in your magic garden. And that will be, um, you'll find the group there. Um, I'm new to the groups, so. <laughs> I will put with... all the links down below so they can just Perfect. click on that and join. That makes it so much better. So, <laughs> yeah, I would love to uh, have you guys see me over there. And this is just so exciting. I love being on a podcast. Right? It's so much fun. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much. I will let you go and get to your little one. He's right. been waiting patiently for you. So yeah, he, he gave us time to do two podcasts. He so did. Thank you. I'm grateful <laughs> for him. Me too. Oh man. I feel very successful today already. <laughs> Good. You should feel very successful. We did a successful job today. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. You're welcome. Thank you so much. I will talk to you later. Wow, I learned so much from this podcast, and I hope you took away a lot of teachable moments like I did. And it's crazy after having this conversation how many things in my life make sense now just by learning about my human design. And instead of, you know, I always would get frustrated with myself over little things that I actually have no control over. So looking at, at it that way opened up this whole door to surrender to the things that are out of my control and to allow life to flow freely through me, but by harnessing my tools that were given to me or from my human design what I was meant to do on this earth and how I can help and grow in my magic <laughs> just like her podcast 
and learn how to, you know, what I need to learn on this earth and what I was born to give to other people. So again, I highly recommend going and getting just a free human design and, you know, you can definitely learn about this yourself or you can definitely go and find someone, you know, even Leia here who can teach you about human design and about yourself and it's so important that we go and find these tools and tap into them and start teaching ourselves Again, this podcast is to bring you teachable moments so that you can learn and that you can go and experience this and go out there and learn more, dive deep into topics that spark something in you. And sometimes when we feel uncomfortable with a topic, sometimes the world is telling you to look even deeper into that because sometimes they contradict our beliefs that we have had that maybe someone else has put on to us doesn't mean it needs to be your belief and beliefs are constantly changing we all are constantly changing even our beliefs so I hope you had an amazing time because I had an amazing time with connecting with Leia and I'm so grateful for her and all her wisdom that she shared with us, and her brain dump, and I know that we covered so many things in here, talking about astrology, and human design, and even just talking about what consciousness is, or the divine, or God, whatever you like to call it, it's all within us, and we are all connected, And we have to tap in to that power source because we are part of that power source. So I hope you all have a magical month of May and have magical moments throughout every single day. Until next Tuesday, namaste.